My lady and I went down to the local markets today to see what we could score for dinner and we picked up um, a bit of seafood and some watercress, so that's what I'll be working with. We ended up getting some mussels and, yes, yeah, some watercress and a couple of flounders. Yeah, they're quite, quite big mothers, so they'll be quite tasty. So I think I'll probably bake them in the oven with a bit of milk and butter and cream and probably make mussel fritters and a cress salad. So I'll start with by opening the mussels, I'm sure you're used to that already. Find the crack, put the knife in, just take it to the back and they flip open really quick. All open now, and I only ate three, or maybe four, five, but there's still a lot left for fritters. When it comes to uh, cutting up the uh, mussels for the fritters, there's a couple of opinions. Some just dice it all up and put it in, and others use the blender. Personally, I like to do both. I use the outer area of the mussel, sort of just cut up and in there, because I like a bit of chewy texture to the fritter. It's quite yummy. And I also blend up the rest because that helps sort of bind it and give the fritter a bit more sort of consistency when it's being made. Well, that's how I think anyway. I've thrown some garlic cloves in here as well. It um, saves me cutting them up really finely. It'll blend it really good. And the Nutri Ninja's easier to clean than a blender. Doesn't look the best at the moment, but it will be when it's finished. But I'm quite happy with that mixture. Some chunky bits and some good blended bits to uh, bind it all together. So we add a couple of eggs. Half a cup of milk. A cup of flour. And a teaspoon of baking powder. And we whisk all that together to make the uh, batter. Then I add the uh, mussel to the batter. Mix it all in. Now I add the garnishing elements to the batter. I'm adding the coriander, the spring onion, two of them, cracked pepper, rock salt and some paprika. So I'll just put this to the side now and leave it while I prep the fish because I won't make the fritters until the fish is cooking. And because we're kind of greedy and went for the biggest flounders there we have to cook them in two separate dishes because we don't have one dish big enough to cook both at the same time. So I'll just film one getting prepped but um, I'm actually doing both obviously. They'll both fit in the oven when I cook them. Now this mix is for one fish, it's uh, one and a half cups of milk and a third of a cup of cream and it's got one small lemon. It's also got half a large onion in here and a good dollop of lemon pepper and also half a cup of parsley. You'll note I've also left the rind of that lemon in here to add a bit of zestiness to the uh, flavour. Then we spoon the liquid all over the fish and cover it like that and leave it to soak in there for a little bit and then we'll put both of them in the oven to bake shortly. Now they're ready to go into the oven. I've made it extra decadent by adding dollops of butter on the top and an extra um, bit of cream as well. But you may as well go the whole hog. It'll be tasty as. And so I've added some crescent bean sprouts and a bit of seasoning to the plate set. I'll put the flounder on once uh, it's cooked. And the fish goes in the oven for about 15 minutes on 200 degrees Celsius. That's about 392 Fahrenheit. Then we add the uh, fritter mixture to the uh, pan, which I've had on for a bit. I'm doing about three at a time. Then we flip them over, sort of two minutes each side, and that's enough. So after two minutes each side, I've let them dry on a handy towel here to get the canola oil off. And there they are, our muscle fritters all ready to go with our dinner. Now we've got the baked flounder out of the oven. It was in there for about 15-16 minutes and it looks cooked and pretty yummy and ready to plate. So the flounder's plated now and I've uh, spooned some more of the white um, milk sauce over it as well as adding a bit of lemon juice and some pepper. 
finally making use of uh, the chicken carcass we had left from the other day's tea. I boiled that down to make a broth with some watercress and that'll be a nice little drink to add to tea.